It's clear that governments are not doing enough and they recognise it. Um, in 2015, all of the world's governments uh, agreed to the Paris Agreement, which sets a goal of limiting global warming to well below two degrees Celsius. And then they put on the table their plans. And when you add up all those plans, they are not consistent with that goal. We are approaching the fifth anniversary at the end of next year. And over the next 15 months, governments have to come forward with revised pledges for action with increased ambition. And the summit that the UN Secretary General is holding on Monday is about building momentum, trying to convince world leaders that they have to do far more than they're currently doing. And of course, the US pulled out of that Paris climate accord. Um, Greta Thunberg was talking to members of the US Congress. Do you, do you think her words will have an effect, given that America has played a leading role in the past in trying to tackle climate change? Well, the United States has not actually left the Paris Agreement yet. It won't finalise that process until uh, the 5th of November next year, which is the day after the next presidential election. And I think it's clear now that many Republicans, as well as Democrats, accept the science and want action. The climate change denial that's been embraced by President Trump and other members of the Republican Party is going to be a vote loser. And they have to, will have to be making a choice about whether they want to be in that position or whether they want to take the responsible action. Because Americans can see, like everybody else around the world, that the impacts of climate change are here and happening now. They're damaging lives and livelihoods. And whether you're rich or poor, you're exposed to these impacts. And that's why I think all world leaders are now beginning to realize that they have to take real action. Well, you say whether you're rich or poor, but it's poorer nations that have been feeling the impact the most. We saw the, the recent hurricane in the Bahamas. Uh, richer nations, not so much. And I think that is uh, President Trump's argument that actually he cares more about economic concerns rather than environmental ones, which perhaps won't affect people like him. It's certainly true that poorer people are more exposed to the impacts of climate change, but being rich does not stop you being exposed to it. The United States is experiencing a series of impacts which are linked to climate change. They've been having uh, wildfires in the West, which are linked to an increase in dry conditions. They're seeing excessive flooding all around, all around the country. So they are increasingly paying the price, an economic price for it. And the uh, Atlantic coast of the United States and the Gulf Coast is incredibly exposed to the impacts of stronger tropical cyclones or hurricanes and sea level rise. And it's only a matter of time before there's a very major strike on the United States that will cause a lot of damage and probably loss of life. So I think that anybody who looks at the science will understand that President Trump's attitude towards climate change is incredibly irresponsible and putting lots of people's lives and livelihoods yeah. at risk. Given all that, what do you think next week's United Nations Climate Action Summit will actually achieve? Will there be concrete uh, proposals, concrete action taken? Well, we'll have to see what world leaders come and deliver. But the fact that you're going to get world leaders there spending a whole day talking about climate change shows that they recognize the seriousness of the issue. But what they really have to do is recognize that economic growth and development is consistent with smart action to reduce climate change. We take the example of cities. If you have cities that are polluted and congested because you're not planning it properly and very reliant on diesel and petrol to drive your transport, that's not a very productive environment. If you have a better planned city, which relies much more on electric vehicles or hydrogen vehicles, not only will you have people who spend less time unproductively stuck in traffic jams, but you will improve air quality and you will reduce the impacts of climate change, all of which is beneficial to the, um, to the economy as well.